You know what made me angry? And can I be petty? Anything and everything. Here's the problem is AI is just going to take over. Like, that's a weird thought. I've been performing for nine years. I've hosted for Jay Leno. I've also hosted for Tom Segura. I've hosted for Burt Kreischer. Plenty of people who don't care. Comedians aren't even always funny. Main part of the job, the audience. It would just be the same problem. Boom. And then one day you're just going to wake up and you're going to have 20 million views on a video. To remove ourselves from the equation. Well, how many meme accounts do you follow? You know what I mean? Like things like Nugget and Cheers. This is Anything and Everything, a space for creators, talent, and entertainers such as comedians, actors, models, musicians, and creatives bring production to life. A place to be seen, to be heard, to share their stories, and advice for the world, and a place to be celebrated. Risk more than others think is safe. Dream more than others think is practical. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss this. Be sure to tune in to the YouTube channel every Friday. See you guys think? So I've been eating a lot of the whipped cream. Like as a meal? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> this is Anything and Everything. Welcome back. I'm your host, Jessica Shea. And today we have comedian Paul Muji. Welcome to the show, Paul. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Tell us like who you are, what do you do, and how long you been? Well, let's start in 1981 when I was born. <laughs> okay. <No>. Uh, <laughs> just... Start from the beginning, so there's perfect context. Basically, I'm a comedian. Yeah. And I'm a writer. Uh, I used to be a high school teacher and wrestling coach, and I gave that up back in 2016, and I have not looked back. And I have just taken on as many uh, content, comedy, writing gigs as humanly possible. And so that's uh, that's how, you know... My life has been going. Yeah. Okay. So you create content as well. Comedy for yes. social media. So I actually create comedy content for two different platforms. So there's me, Paul Boomjean, the comedian. And then I also run a comedy school and I use content there for, you know, advertising. So for me, it's a lot of clips of my comedy and uh, a lot of cap cut using those memes. And I, what I found was, is that I was doing okay. Like I'd get like 10,000 views on a comedy clip and, you know, it wasn't the world's greatest numbers, but they were good. They were good. But then I started doing these cap cut things where it's like, you know, Kevin James walking around looking confused and that, that would get like massive view. Turns out me not showing my face was oh. all I needed to do. Sometimes the faceless creators are the ones that get the views, you know? Yeah. Well, how many meme accounts do you follow? You know what I mean? Like yeah. things like Nugget or those that are like viral. Yeah. yeah, 10 million followers and all that. So, okay. but I create for that. And then I've also been doing a lot of creating for the, the comedy school that I work for, but I use that to generate revenue for the school, okay. which is interesting because for me, I'm trying to build a brand on my page, like on Instagram and TikTok, try to build my brand, what mm -hmm. my style of comedy you know the other page for the school i'm trying to get people excited about signing up for comedy classes which is a whole different type of thing i can't just put a clip of me on there it doesn't sell a class mm -hmm. but if i put something that's you know kind of a, a trending viral thing all of a sudden people start signing up yeah you know what it is so sometimes and i heard this from one of the best editors that there are in the game right now um one of logan paul's old editors hayden hiller smith he said sometimes we have to remove ourselves from the equation in the edits we want to add ourselves in but we have to think about marketing purposes and like when we put ourselves we really narrow it down to the people who may only know us or have a connection with us to want to hear what we have to say so sometimes if we just kind of remove ourselves from the project a lot of times that's when people be more about it because it doesn't really single anyone out to add to that so when I first took over the comedy school, the Instagram page had not been used at all. So the previous administration did nothing with it. It had like seven posts, maybe a hundred people follow. It was yeah. really sad. So I didn't know what to do because at the time I really wasn't a, a digital marketing expert. So I just put myself, I used my face on the Instagram handle mm -hmm. and that got us like 200. But when I, you're right, when I took myself off, and I focused on what we were selling. Yeah. Because I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. Once I did that, boom, all of a sudden we shot up to about a thousand. Like my business has always been me. Yeah. I've always been the business. So I've been trying to find how to create a business where it's not about me and focuses on a, a better picture, a bigger picture. Content creators and actors, comedians, people who run the show, it's very habitual for us to want to be in the spotlight or to create the concepts around who we are as characters, personality. And I had struggled from removing myself because I always want to be in the advertisement. I want to be in the highlight. What I found is that the, the reason we get into content creation or the arts or comedy or writing is we do have an ego. Like my stepdad has like one picture on Facebook. He doesn't care. If you woke up tomorrow, if I woke up tomorrow and all of our pictures were wiped away from our accounts, we would have a panic attack. Yeah. Right. Whereas like there's plenty of people who don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything with it. And so like that's the difference is we 
want people to know who we are. Mm -hmm. We have a desire to be famous. We have yeah. a desire to be influencers. We have a desire to make a difference. Yeah. And positive too, right? Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden we can put ourselves too much up front. Mm -hmm. And then that's when people start to notice they're like, oh, they're in it for the fame. They're in it for the clout. They're in it for the free products. They're in it for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's really right reasons. You're right. You have to kind of separate yourself a little bit. Notice that a lot of my comedy friends who've gone viral became big uh, sketch comedians. Uh, Trevor Wallace, uh, Chad Goes Deep. When they focused on the story and they focused on telling their comedy story and characters and bringing new people in mm -hmm. and then cross-promoting with those new people, mm -hmm. they blew up even faster. Mm -hmm. Had they just focused on themselves, right. they would not have grown. You're right. And that's the truth. And that's content creating is sometimes those collaborations. Since I've started my content creating journey, it has always been me because of the modeling and stuff to do it for business. This is a business purpose. And the reason why I think a lot of people freak out when like, let's just say tomorrow, none of your photos are, or your content's a lot right. is because sometimes this is our livelihood. It's how we make a paycheck to know, okay, I'm going to have a roof over my head this week or next week or whatever, or food in my stomach, right? Or to, to take care of the kids or whatever it is, it becomes almost where we can't step away because it is our livelihood. And we also are so reliant on it. You know, there's obviously people who don't use social media for their careers and stuff and live a completely different life. I don't know what that'll ever be like, but I think now with this generation, <laughs> everyone's making money off those. You, you mean working from eight to five and then seeing your wife and kids and your husband? Yeah, no, I don't know what that's like. No, me neither. You know, no, right? So it's like, it's like there are people who just live these lives. Yeah. And so as a comedian, those are the people that I hope come to see the show. When I teach my comedy classes, one of the things I tell the comedians is this. And the same thing goes with people who have followings on the internet. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. You are doing something that they are afraid to do. So there's watchers mm -hmm. and there's doers. And you need both. It's like there's writers and there's readers. Producers and consumers. Right. Yeah. And if you don't realize that, if you think everyone is a consumer, then you're not going to be able to reach the people because you're just assuming everyone wants to give me their money they mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. you have to provide a service mm -hmm. whatever that is yeah. and, and and as a comedian i love the fact that people who i don't want to say mundane but they live a mundane life they live mm -hmm. but they might make good money or they yeah. might be really happy or they might have great vacations they want to be able to just do 20 minutes of just vegetation they want that break on youtube they want that break on tiktok and just scrolling mm -hmm. and seeing what's out there. They want to come to a comedy show and just laugh and they don't want to worry about their life. And we provide them with that opportunity. Right. Which, and even if it's not a huge following, you know, I mean, we were talking earlier, but I said this before. Yeah. Someone is on TikTok because you're on it. Yeah. Someone is on Instagram watching you. And that's a weird thought. And right. the day you get off Instagram, the day you get off TikTok, there's going to be people who are going to be like, well, I was just following Jessica. Mm -hmm. I mean, other people had it. Yeah. So I just decided to follow them too. But they're on there just to see you. And when you get off that platform, TikTok is going to go, oh, why did we lose, let's say, 1,000 people, 1,500 people? Well, oh, this is what happened. I think a lot of uh, consumers have their favorite entertainers or content creators that they do look forward to on a daily to come check in on, see the new content. Yeah. These platforms thrive on are the people who return because they're so connected to a creator. Who's your favorite? My favorite creator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for YouTube? Yeah. I would probably say Eric, just because he's always innovating on great projects and the, ideas. Yeah. You get up in the morning. Yeah. Who do I look forward to looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who do you? I have, it's usually my friends. You okay. know, I have Bachelor now, Tana Mojo's podcast, canceled every once in a while, uh, Call Her Daddy, like Eric. So when he was doing his everyday vlogging for 30 days, you know, I look forward in to it every day of vlog and got to go check in on the new episode. Yeah. And that's what I look forward to. So I have my few. It's particularly podcasts, obviously really big creators who are making really great content. Do you find that when you're on YouTube now that you're looking at different things than you did maybe five, six, seven years ago? Yeah, because content's always changing. Right. Yeah. So do you remember who you were first watching on YouTube back when like things were happening? Yeah, Jenna Marbles. Jenna Marbles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to watch Jenna Marbles too. Oh, great. Right? But it was just because you're like, oh, what's this? This is popular, right? Right. So so I'm watching Jenna Marbles and you yeah. see her with the little dog, yeah. right? And she's just she getting all this weird advice. And she's very attractive. Yeah, right? pretty girl, does makeup. And I remember after like a few videos, all right, I had enough of this. But I know friends who like are devastated she doesn't do YouTube anymore. But what I found was is that I went from watching a lot of comedy clips and just watching clips from The Simpsons and Seinfeld and just trying to get comedy. And now that I'm older, like yeah. I'm only 42, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really trying to make sure that, you know, I have a good retirement. I'm now watching all these financial. Yeah. So I'll wake up in the morning and that's what I, all I see now. <laughs> and so yeah. and then when I have problems at work, what I'll do is I'll be like, you know, is my boss allowed to do this? And then the next morning, it'll just give you a bunch of. Oh, yeah. And the next morning I wake up and it's like, 
Uh, your boss is not allowed to harass you this way, this way, this way. Five ways to get your 401k. It's crazy because they, mm -hmm. the minute you put That's something okay. in a search, it, it just knows. And then you just get all of that. Yeah. That's the algorithm working. Recommending and videos you might want to watch. I'm not even su uh, subscribed to those. Videos. Oh, true. They're just recommending. They're just videos. recommending. Content. So the things I'm subscribed to, I don't always see. That's the thing about the YouTube is it's not always about the subscribers. Right. It's about your content. I think with, with TikTok for me, that actually was a really appealing at first. And then eventually I just kind of gave up a little bit on that and focused more on Instagram just because I think my age group, I think is a little more Instagram. TikTok's a really young. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of 12-year-olds and you just go, all right, I'm, you know, I like the idea of the for you because yeah. Instagram doesn't do that. Right. Like so, recommending you stuff. Right. Now they do. And it's awful. Do you notice that? Yeah, you ever, explore page. You should follow this person. Like, no, I'm not going to follow a 19-year-old girl who's on a boat. Yeah. Okay? I have no desire to follow. I think you do. They probably think I do because I'm a 42-year-old single man. They know everything about me, right? Right, right. And I'm Armenian, so, you know, and I wear chains. So, you know, I'm sure they just assume yeah. through the face recognition, you know. But we know this guy. We know this guy. You want to see 19-year-olds on boats, right? Yeah. No, but... What TikTok did is it said, okay, we noticed that you like certain things. Mm -hmm. We're going to recommend strangers. We're going to recommend normal people. Whereas on Instagram, you had to be super hot. You had to be super talented. You had to have a skill set that people wanted. Yeah. On TikTok, you yeah. actually just had to exist. Yeah, you could just stand there and not do anything. And there's all these people who were making dumb, hacky videos. <laughs> And they got pushed through the algorithm. There's a content creator. They're called the McFarlands. Mm -hmm. And they make this silly dad jokes. Mm -hmm. And I get some of the stuff and some of it I don't get. Is there kids on this channel? Two sons with a dad. Dad yeah. looks basically like a real, like a traditional dad. He's yeah. Heavy set Santa Claus looking yeah, guy. Yeah, right. Super silly. Goofy. Yeah. And I, I appreciate, I, I think what they did is amazing. They got yeah. like uh, millions of followers. But then, you know what made me angry? And can I be petty? Yeah. Am I allowed to be petty? Yes, yeah, so let's hear it. It's, it's anything and yeah, everything. everything. Okay. So I'm going to be petty. Okay. He got to go to a bunch of movie premieres as like they're promoting, like they're like, oh, your following is so family oriented. Oriented. Yes. So you know what? He gets to go to all these Netflix movies that are having family movies. Like there's a new Ryan Reynolds movie that came out earlier this year, last year. Oh, yeah, no. He gets to go to the big premiere, take pictures with everybody, all of that stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, wait, you want to go to that? I want to do that. Yeah. And then I go on TikTok and I make a stupid video and it gets, you know, 400 views. What is he doing? You know, and, and you don't know. And the algorithm mm -hmm. is, you know, Will Smith movies have been warning about us about this for the longest time, mm -hmm. that the AI is just going to take over. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. The algorithm is just artificial intelligence. Yeah. Like, that's weird to think that people's income, people's fame, rely on, rely on an AI system to say, oh, Jessica Shea, boom. And then one day you're just going to wake up and you're going to have 20 million views on a video. Like, that's a weird thought. Yeah. That you really aren't in complete control of it. I feel like with the algorithm, it's just kind of one of those things that can be very unpredictable. You just have to have good content. I think once you put out one bit, like even your first video will determine whether or not that page is something that the audience wants to watch. Like let's say you put out five semi-average videos and you put out one really good one. So like your sixth one, is, this is the banger video, it's gonna go viral, but it doesn't go viral because of the fact that the algorithm says, well, the last four you put out weren't really taking a hit. Making so many other pages because they wanna start a fresh page. This is something that I realized recently. Yeah. So I do a lot of casino shows, yeah. right? which means I gamble at these shows, yeah. right? So I got free time. Yeah. Love now, <laughs> I have also lost nine grand and have in Vegas and I haven't been back, but I do all the Native Americans casinos. Okay. Yeah. I lost nine grand at the Hooters Casino in 2008, got drunk as a skunk, ended up losing all my money. And then I ended up waking up at the Dan Marino, back in the day they had the Dan Marino wing place next to the Hooters. Yeah. And I fell asleep and I woke up with a pile of 32 wings in front of me. And that's when I realized I probably have a gambling addiction. No, this is a true story. Yeah. So then I went downstairs the next morning and said, I have a gambling addiction. I have to leave. And they said, here's a buffet ticket. Mm -hmm. Please leave. We don't want to get sued. And then I drove to Utah the next day or that morning. But now I don't drink anymore. Mm -hmm. So I have the ability to be able to handle myself. And I go, here's a hundred dollars. Once I lose it, it's done. Mm -hmm. we're, we're playing for fun. That's all we're doing. Yeah. But here's what I realized. I'm a blackjack. I can count cards, okay? Because, like, my brain is this big, okay? When you do video blackjack, mm -hmm. you always win the first three. Yeah. Then you lose the next five or six. I'm saying this right now to everybody. The, the trick? trick the trick to be a rain man 
when it comes to blackjack. Mm -hmm. You play three times, you win three times, then you collect your money. The mm -hmm. ticket comes out, then you put it back in, you do it again three times, okay? And you just continue to do that. You will win. By the time you're done, you'll have like 12 winning hands and like four losing hands. But if you keep playing, you will lose everything. That doesn't happen at the table, though. No, because it's different. Right? Because there's people. Yeah. And it's real life. And people who are on, who have 16 are going to go, hit. You're like, no, don't do that. Yeah, they, mess up your hand. That's why I don't like blackjack. Right? Yeah. The same thing about the content, like you said. If you mm -hmm. think about it, mm -hmm. if you go video, 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 nothing happened, you got to start over. Yeah. Or yeah. there's people who go video, hit, hit, hit. And then they do another one. They go hit, hit, hit. Then they got three or four pages mm -hmm. that are all hits. Mm -hmm. Now they're cross-promoting with themselves. Yeah, You've never seen that, right? Mm -hmm. So I realized that the last two months I've been doing these casino gigs, I'm like, I need to start treating my content like yeah. three videos of clips of me. Boom, boom, boom. But then I'm not going to keep doing clips of me. Now I'm going to do three like meme videos. Boom, boom, boom. And I realized all of a sudden yeah. my Instagram bumped up about 200 followers within like a week. Yeah. Now that's not world beating. But I realized that that's how the algorithm is right. looking at. There's the growth there. Yeah. If I just put nothing but stand up clips, it would just be the same problem and I'd be stuck. And everyone complains about Instagram not being able to grow anymore. Yeah. Right. That's the big complaint everybody has. And TikTok's where you can at least grow an audience. But what I realized is if you play the algorithm correctly and I'm already at like 10,000. So it's just getting that and keep building that. Mm -hmm. I realized, OK, this is I think I may have figured out something, but I only figure it out by losing money mm -hmm. at blackjack. Mm -hmm. In, in these different so funny. Consumers. it's like yeah. how do you learn the hard way yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta get down but you know all of life is essentially the same system. the knowledge you have in one area and say how is this like that yes same thing with my comedy same thing with anything it's like yeah. figuring out okay what works what doesn't and then applying to different areas as well right yeah. yeah so you were talking about you have a special out and it's on youtube yes i have a dry bar special i filmed it back in mid 2017 mm -hmm. and then the company actually went bankrupt so they held it hostage oh then like give the, it to you. no they were like it's it's now owned by some group some capital venture group that like bought up all of it well what they did was they bought them all back mm -hmm. and then by that point they were actually filming under a different name so it was under name a and then name b they filmed more special and so then they had to put all those b specials and so finally got to, uh t brought out in 2021 mm -hmm. but it's on youtube you can see the full it came out 2022 i do remember when you dropped it yes yes and so i sent it to like everybody yeah. and it has a good amount of views it's actually the most positive piece of content i've ever had like there are people who are like oh this is not that funny you're the 180 comments of people going this is really good. People are coming to my shows and they're saying, I saw the dry bar special. And that's really cool. When you have people knowing that like I found you on the internet and then people add me on Instagram because they found me on the internet. And so that's been a really fun uh, experience. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a 30 minute special. Yeah. Everybody should go right now. Yeah. Go watch it. Yes. I'll put the link in the description below. Click on the link and go watch Yeah. So I have that. And then I also did some stuff on Laughs on Fox, which is um, we film in Temecula. And so that was on late night TV back in 2017. So I filmed a lot of really cool stuff in 2017, 18, and 19. And yeah. then the pandemic obviously slowed down yeah. all live production. Yeah, how was that? We did Zoom shows. Yeah. Okay. And those were hideous. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I remember you um, talking about the Zoom. Well, here's the problem is people would turn off their camera. You're playing to names. People will turn their mic off and you'll hear like one person coughing, you know, or, or you're in the middle of a joke, right? And you're like, oh, man. I can't believe I went on this date last night. This is what happened. And then someone will yell out, did we get any peanut butter? And then you're muting people. Yeah. One time I had to mute my grandma. Oh my God. So that was my favorite. So yeah. my buddy was doing an anti-Trump joke. And my grandma, who's the most Republican woman that ever <laughs> lived, 88 years old. And all of a sudden you hear this, stop, stop it. He's our president. How dare you make fun? And I had to mute my grandma that she was heckling. Yeah. from the zoom you know oh my right. God. so that's how a lot of us did it yeah. also uh, a car show people would get into their cars and we would perform on stage and the microphone was put on a frequency you go to an am oh, radio yeah. station and you like find you go to like 580 am oh yeah and then people would honk their horn if they liked the joke oh, that's so cool though it is but you don't really like it's not the same. Oh, no. And also, you don't know if they're honking because they like it or not. Yeah. Right? Because, like, think about honking. Yeah. It's generally, it's danger, danger, danger. Right? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, I went on this date last night. And then all of a sudden, 
uh, 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 shut up. And then sometimes people had clappers and they would have these stupid clappers, like, you know, like Mickey Mouse hands. They're like clapping. <laughs> And you're like clackling during the thing. Uh. And then when we all came back, then we all had to wear masks. Remember you had to like wear the mask and then walk in and then you could take it off oh. when you sat down. Yeah. But then when you got up, you had to put it back on. Well, now you have people like trying to find their mask during your show because they want to go to the bathroom, yeah. right? So it was just from yeah. 2020 to about 2022 January, things were pretty unstable yeah. for comedians. You could only have half rooms. I did though do some pretty cool shows in, in 2021 with uh, Jay Leno, Paul Rodriguez, guy back in the, the, the 80s and 90s. Half rooms sometimes just because we couldn't have a full room. Yeah. You know, it was fun. But at the same time, it was also like, you could feel the difference. You know, you could also feel- It's almost like the, the energies were just oh, off. Energy was off completely. Yeah. And so when you got a good room, you were, you felt good. But generally speaking, it wasn't until about 2022 mm -hmm. when you started to go, okay, I think we're back to normal. Yeah. You know, and now, I mean, if you see somebody with a mask, you know what it kind of is. It's kind of like somebody saying, I still care. And you're like, or maybe they just like want to hide their face and they're trying to find a reason to wear a mask. Okay. Some show people didn't wear makeup. Yeah, right? I don't want to show their face. It's some guy, yeah. I mean, I guess if I were to like accidentally like shave incorrectly, yeah. I was embarrassed. Yeah, I would you find a way I mean? to, I used to love wearing the mask only because sometimes like I would want to hide, like not wearing makeup and yeah. We're going to play a quick game. Okay. We're going to play a couple of quick games. Okay. The first game is called Big Question. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. First thing that pops to your head, just okay. it could be funny, it could be weird. I'm going to set the timer. You have 30 seconds. So you're going to ask a question and I just give an answer right off the top of my head. Yep. We try to do it as fast as possible. And like I said, you have 30 seconds. And first thing that pops to your head. If you don't know an answer, just say skip. <laughs> I just thought of a sketch in my head. Favorite food, skip. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Go. Name of a dog. Fido. Something green. Green beans. Something you have a lot of. A friends. Vacation spot. Santa Barbara. Favorite color. Blue. Celebrity crush. Kirsten Dunst. Something that starts with the letter P. All. Platform you use the most. Instagram. Okay, you did it. I did seconds. it. Yeah, you did it. You answered all those questions. So you did pretty good. Wait, people struggle with this? Yeah. Sometimes people just can't come up. Under pressure. Some, oh, yeah. Yeah, under pressure. It's hard to think of things. You know, that's true. I taught seventh grade. Yeah. Also, they do have a celebrity crush. They don't want to admit it. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that's the right. real truth. I think you're right because I had a guest who was like, I don't have a celebrity crush. And I'm like, yeah, you do. You just don't want to say it. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, and you know, the funny thing is they probably could have named an Instagram model they follow. Yeah, or they just a, don't want to shout anyone out. Oh, like, first crush was Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. No, really. That was like, I remember she was on Teen Jeopardy. She's the same age as me, like by yeah. like a day off. Yeah. And I think we share like close to the same birthday. I remember watching her on, I'd seen her movies, and then all of a sudden she's on Teen Jeopardy. I went and I went, whoa, I like blondes. <laughs> I didn't remember, I like blondes. I can't wait for the clip that says that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I don't cut it out. Oh, uh... no, 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 we're keeping this. This, this is what will go viral. Anything and everything. You performed at the Performing Arts Center, you said. Yes. And you've also performed in many, many shows all around. All around. What would you say is like the biggest show you've done and like the smallest show you've done? So the biggest show I've ever done was uh, a thousand people at the at the Performing Arts Center in Santa Clarita, mm -hmm. and it was a charity event put on by a group of people who were so so Ron Goldman, who O.J. Simpson murdered, mm -hmm. his sister Kim put on this giant fundraiser, and I was asked to host. Everyone's very supportive of Kim, obviously because of all the tragedy her and her father went through. So I went and did this this huge gig, and it was really fun. I'm going to be back. In for another non fundraiser, but for another big show. I've also hosted for Tom Segura. I've hosted for Burt Kreischer, I've hosted for Jay Leno. So I've done some really big shows with some really big names, a lot of, you know, but small shows. I mean, look, when you're starting out, like I, I've done bar shows in front of one person, like one human being who didn't even know it was comedy night. <laughs> okay. I'm walking in with the equipment to help the people set up. Yeah. Nine comic, one audience. Man. Oh, wow. I've done shows it, where, I did a show recently in Richland, Washington at a casino where a grandma fell asleep because she drank too much whiskey and then woke up and went, you're still on stage? <laughs> Thought we got rid of you. You experience all these things, yeah. right? But that's part of what makes it so much fun. Yeah. You have because to see you, it from my reading. You don't know. And here's what's funny. So I've been performing for nine years now, comedy. And what I've learned is it doesn't matter the size of the crowd because an audience of four can be the warmest kindest most giving audience and an audience of 200 can be jerks and so it's really just you knowing comedy doesn't end because you bomb comedy doesn't end because you kill you just keep doing it, right and in some ways it's kind of like you know content okay this this one hit 10 million this one hit 20 you know views i don't quit i keep doing it mm -hmm. as much as it is fun to do big venues and 
get in front of a thousand people. And I've done that a few times now. I've done shows with 20 people mm -hmm. and had the time of my life. Mm -hmm. In fact, last year I had a birthday show recently on my birthday. And so last year I did a birthday show and it was only nine people who showed up and it was Halloween weekend. So I knew nobody was going to come because everyone was going to go out to Halloween. Best nine people in the whole world. Sometimes that's, that's better. You oh, know, it's more intimate and you can have that. And they come and watch me all the time, right? Yeah. These are like fans. It was just nine people. And, and, we knew it was going to be slow that night. And I said, do you want to hear the jokes again? Or do you want to hear the backstory? Mm -hmm. And they were like, we want to hear the backstory. Yeah. So then I started just telling them about how I became a wrestling coach. I started talking about like how I was engaged twice and it didn't work. I talk about all these. And they're like, why don't you do that normally? And I go, because I don't have the opportunity always to do 20, 30 minutes in LA. Mm -hmm. I have to get on the road. To do that. I have to go to casinos. I have mm -hmm. to go to other venues. Because in LA, everyone does like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. I have to do set up, punt. Yeah. Get in, get out and do your best you know five ten minutes yeah but when i have the opportunity to do 30 minutes mm -hmm. and i can just be me the, this past weekend i did some shows in temecula and i was able to just to do whatever i wanted for yeah. 20 25 minutes and i did a little crowd work and i had a little fun with the crowd had fun making fun of the casino i, I wrote a new joke that i'm so proud of and it's so stupid you ready oh, for it yeah, you ready for yeah. it which is i hate doing casino shows because i don't trust myself in the casino yeah, I, i'm all right and here's why because i just i lost 300 dollars at the food court <laughs> That's my favorite yeah. new joke. I, I get to do, and the best part is I can do that for the rest of my life. So you start to write these jokes and you start to figure it out. And then you, then you get to anticipate. Chris Rock one time said, fun when you're killing and you know that they don't know what's still coming, right? They don't know what your closing joke is. They don't know that you still have an impression that they don't even see coming. Yeah. Right. And so that's the joy of stand up. And it, and it doesn't matter four people or 4,000 because when you get to share your gift, which is for me, humor, or at least just, I always say comedians aren't even always funny. Sometimes they're just interesting, right? They just say interesting things. You know, I feel like that's kind of what Louis C.K. did back when he was starting to like build up. He wasn't like the funniest cop. He was the most interesting. Cop. And so I feel like that's how with me, if I can just be interesting and have fun and talk and say something that no one's ever heard of or tell a story that no one could repeat, then I did my part and I contributed to their to their lives. They come and ask questions and they get to feel very excited because now they have a question for the comedian. So they feel a reason. Because most people leave the show and they go, oh, thank you or bye or you did great. But when you do something where they can ask a question, like I do a whole bit about how I use an Australian accent when I did food delivery, give more tips. No. I was making a thousand dollars a week wow. with a bad Australian accent. Oh my gosh. Oh, the people of Simi Valley all thought that I was this Australian refugee. But then people come yeah. afterwards and they'll be like, well, how do you do the accent? Yeah. And I go, I don't know. I just always have been able to do these different kind of accents and mm -hmm. these act out. After five minute conversation, they add you on Instagram. You have a fan for life. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they message a lot. Sure, you have the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. Just people you meet or or just fans. And then they just message and they you're kind of like, oh, this is, you know, okay. It's a new thing because regular people don't have that. Everyone's stepdad doesn't have a stranger DMing them. Hey, what are you going to go back to Home Depot? Like, like that's, <laughs> that's not a real yeah. problem, right? Whereas yeah. like people are like, hey, when are you going to come back to this modeling thing? Or mm -hmm. when are you going to come back to this party? Or when are you going to come back to this bar? And 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 when are you going back to the show? And uh, and then you have to respond. It becomes yeah. your job. Yeah. In a weird way, your job is to engage 24-7, yeah. right? You yeah. get to go to sleep at night, and that's your eight-hour break. And then for the rest of the day, that's 16 hours, you're engaging with people. Right, and especially as a comedian or a performer or somebody in the spotlight, your audience main part of the job, the audience. Yes, because yeah. if they don't feel connected to you, Right. Whether it's a video yeah. or a performance yeah. or whatever, they yeah. have to feel connected. And that's the thing that I've learned more and more. Being okay to be vulnerable, to post things that maybe aren't always popular, but I don't mean like politically or something. I just mean things that like I just feel are important to say, whether they're funny things or not, and then allowing the audience to engage back with that. Mm -hmm. And I looked over, I'll never forget, and I smiled, and she smiled, and then I just went. Like, I was like, no, I, I was, oh, I'm such a coward. Wait a minute now. This is a free speech kind of zone. 